I wanted to talk about um, emoji as language and why is it under the rubric of Unicode? How does it really fit into the whole mission of Unicode? Oh, Unicode. <laughs> you know, it's it's like the it's a you know as Toral um, mentioned in her introduction, it's it's with this non for profit that is really taken for granted <laughs> because they're ultimately the reason why people can message each other in, in their native languages. So because when they'll flashback, you know, like if you got on the internet, whatever it was 30 years ago, yes, and you tried to type to someone, good morning, mm -hmm. in your native language, unless that person had that same exact font installed on their computer, they couldn't read it mm. because there's no universal character encoding sheet, right? There was just like, here's a font, here's a font. And no one has the same fonts installed on their computers. Like what, not, not 30 years ago. So um, uh, Mark Davis and others uh, had this insight into saying like, okay, how do we fix this so that the world's languages, people can actually communicate online. Mm. And so that's where Unicode came from. And emoji were born from that vision to make mm -hmm. sure that everyone in the world can speak to each other, be it in text form. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was a real major change for how computers and phones worked. So uh, emoji became part of that initiative when there was a desire for there to be emoji interoperability in the same way that there was like alphabet interoperability. So that when you're sending someone good morning or a heart, a person on the receiving end feels loved and greeted mm. in the morning. Um, but because it's a non-for-profit, I'm going to shamelessly plug their Adopt a Character program, which is a really cute program. You can go to unicode.org to see it, um, where you can, you know, like, you know, it's kind of like Adopt a Star. Have you ever heard of, done that for like, <laughs> yes. remember, like, we do like Adopt a, one of the infinite stars in the universe and name it after someone. So you can adopt a character within the Unicode set. And that money goes to helping them digitize um, underrepresented languages. Uh, it helps them, I mean, it goes into a number of different things, but it helps them digitize mm. languages online. Mm. Um, yeah. Do you have a sense of, I want, maybe this is a question for Toral, but do you have a sense on what language are still, are still sort of like underrepresented or what, what work needs to be done or what are Unicode's priorities? I wonder if you've heard. You know, oh, looks like Toral unmuted. Maybe? I did. <laughs> Thanks for asking that. All right. so the most popular languages are fully, um, you know, encoded right now, but some of the languages that we are working on, for example, are Mayan hieroglyphics. Mm. So even those languages that are under-resourced, not in use, but um, wanting to capture those as well. So that's what Adopt a Character, for example, would help support. That's wonderful. So adopt a Character. I looked into it. My favorite part is you actually publish or the characters that people have selected. And if you go on the Unicode's website, there is an incredible chart. For example, Vint Cerf, father of the internet, has adopted the sign of horns emoji, right? The rock metal, but also means I love you, right? Like in sign language. Jennifer, as an employee of Google, can you tell us why Google has adopted the burger emoji? Oh, we gonna go there? It's such ancient history. Um, yes. There was an incident where whoever designed the hamburger emoji um, possibly had never eaten a hamburger. And I guess the ingredients were in the wrong order. And uh, it was a executive pri prioritization to fix. And so, and I, I wasn't around when, when this happened, um, but I imagine the adoption is a cheeky acknowledgement of that hamburger. Mm. sequencing mm. Um, but I, I i love if you haven't visited here i'll put a link in here to the adopted characters i wanted to once write a story about all the people who adopted characters because mm. there's some really great stories in here like someone adopted the person walking in memory of someone who who anyways like there's some sad stories in here um and then there's like some romantic stories in here and then there's a lot of like corporate sponsorship like attempt to like co-opt some of these symbols um, IBM but, cloud. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, pretty good. Like Red Lobster adopted the lobster emoji, and you know, I don't know. Uh, I think Taco Bell. I mean, look, Taco Bell may have adopted the taco, but I think it's super cute. Um, you can you can adopt a character, whether it be an emoji or any character of any language. Mm -hmm. Um, and the it's, money goes to Unicode. Yeah. That's wonderful. It's a choice of from one hundred thirty-six thousand 
I think, right? You can choose. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's substantial. All right, now we are going into um, what everyone maybe wants to know is the, I wanted to delve into the emoji proposal process and lift the veil to this um, murky enterprise. <laughs> Not really. Um, okay, for, I'm assuming none of us are in the committee or maybe some. I wonder, know, some folks in here from the <laughs> Oh, maybe they'd like to pipe in. Can you take us behind the scenes, take us by the hand, take us behind the scenes of a subcommittee meeting, especially when you received all the proposals for new emoji? Who's in the room? How does the conversation unfold? Where does it happen? Are there snacks? I don't know. Take us. I'll give you a prompt. For example, someone you are tackling a proposal, let's say, for a new Ensemada emoji, if you didn't know, a superior Spanish bread that one can argue deserves an emoji as much as the French croissant. Um, all right, breads. Breads. We are here. That's the, um, it's curly, right? It's the curly, the, the curly guy, it's, yeah. I think it's Mallorcan, but it's also in many other, I guess, former colonies of Spain. Um, I grew up in Manila and we have a version with like lots of butter, lots of cheese and puffier, like a brioche, but encimada. And some, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it sounds, it sounds so mysterious. So I would, I'm here to demystify the mystery. Yes. It's literally, if you go to the uh, guidelines page, which I will submit to our chat. Mm. We literally go line by line here. So we go, if you go to selection factors, first thing you do when you see your proposal is we say, okay, is it being um, proposed for compatibility? Mm. Generally, this is binary, yes or no. Sometimes, mm there can be some ambiguity there. Mm. But then we go to B, usage. We need to know, like, we don't want to like just throw something random that hypothetically could be used because when you add an emoji, you can never take it back. <laughs> so there has to be some indication that people are already using it for us to scale to the entire world in every okay. platform. So one way of giving us some insight into that is, you know, are people talking about it online? <laughs> Are people using it today? So we look at usage level, like Bing statistics or mm. YouTube statistics and things like that. So we ask folks to collect that. And I can go line by line here. So what we would do is first you Google your delicious treat and say, like, okay, are people talking about it a lot? Ah. Also, does this exist in an existing platform? Are people, is there such an emote mm. of this in a popular chat app? And is it frequently used in that? Not merely does it exist, but like, is it frequently used within that ecosystem? Um, is there, and then they're like, yeah, we go line by line and we check them off. We say, yes, no, this requires a little bit more discussion and investigation. And when we're looking through this checks, checklist of criteria, we really are trying to make the proposal as best as it can be. Okay. So if we're seeing that um, the search term isn't great, but we do a different search term and we found better results because maybe theirs was too overly specific. Hmm. Um, or is too broad, right? We'll suggest, we'll send back for modifications. Hey, try this query mm. and, you know, resubmit your proposal. Mm. So we are doing our best to, you know, to both review it, but also like it, edit, edit and make it as, as, as strong as it possibly can be. Um, and do we want to go through all the criteria? Would you like to go step by step? No, but please, everyone who is like mulling an emoji, go to it. Um, but I wanted to know, like, I love knowing the vibe of like decision-making pro. Is it online? Is it a democracy? Is it a kind of like British parliament heated debate? Or is it more like a study hall? How, what, how many are you? What is the energy? Oh, you know. How long I, does it take? I don't know. Can you tell me what you imagine? Cause then I just want to. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna demystify I, it real fast. <laughs> I imagine it as, I don't know. Um, a secret room with great snacks because you're holding there basically a jury. I was just in jury duty. So maybe, maybe like jury duty, you've got to make decisions. Otherwise, I see it. what are we wearing? You are, um, I don't know, normal, like, okay. um, okay. Not robes. No robes. I mean, I mean, you want to evoke neutrality. Okay. I imagine like a, I don't know, a diverse panel 
um, with like easy access to maybe like experts that you may want to call. I don't know, but I feel like you're locked in a room, but I don't know. We're, we're both the captors and the captive. Yes. Of emoji. I see. Yes. yes. You know, it is like, I, you know, I'm in meetings every, <laughs> <laughs> the whole day <laughs> from the minute I check in to the minute I check in. It is no different than any other meeting that I go to throughout the day. There isn't. Um, There's not one meeting. Point. It's sorry. just one of. Yeah. Sorry. There's not one emoji deciding day. No, we meet twice uh, a week. Okay. Um, we and maybe I'll start from. Yeah. So we take submissions from basically in the spring and summer. Mm -hmm. So it's rolling. So we get them throughout the I don't know for a number of months, mm -hmm. and we we meet for two hours a week. And we don't just review proposals. Reviewing proposals is just one part of what the subcommittee does. Um, but we, we take the time to, it's sort of like um, how academic papers are peer reviewed. Okay. You know, the proposal is reviewed by multiple people. They all give it a score. The score is then reviewed. We then take a, not really, it's taken a, it's, we say take a vote, but really it's just like a pulse check. Like, does everyone, does everyone agree with this conclusion? Um, if, if there isn't, we have a discussion about it and, and then we take another like a pulse check um, and we triage, you know, we, we go through all the decks, we prioritize based on um, what has been reviewed the fastest because uh, then we can get through it. Uh, but we do try to get through all the proposals that have been submitted within that timeline in order for us to make recommendations for the next Unicode release. So today, we are still reviewing proposals for Unicode 16.0. Mm. 16.0? Yes, yeah, 16.0. Um, and the date for submission ends at the end of July. Mm. So we'll make our final recommendations this fall to mm -hmm. the UTC. That's, that's wonderful. This is a big, if some might argue, impossible job of deciding how the world speaks and you know emotes online. Um, I wonder if you see yourself yourselves as gatekeepers, chronicles of culture, instigators, or creators. You are a visual artist yourself, and I don't know who else is in the committee. I don't know what their backgrounds are, but how do you how how do you see yourselves? You know, I think it's so romantic and lovely to think of us as instigators or to some degree gatekeeper, you know, like um, chronicles of, of culture, of archeologists, of researchers. And I mean, like, it's not that any of those are singularly true or untrue. It's just, I think on the subcommittee, and I don't wanna speak on behalf of everyone on it, but I can speak certainly for myself, which is that what Unicode is really good at is ensuring interoperability that we can just communicate from one device to another. Mm -hmm. And that is really why I'm on the subcommittee versus just creating emojis in my own little app. Mm. Like I could do that. That's another cool job. I don't have to care if they work here or there or anywhere, just in my little app. Mm -hmm. But I'm on the subcommittee because there are certain concepts that would benefit that we are already using in some way, but mm -hmm. need to be, that need to have interoperability. Mm -hmm. And that's when a Unicode is really, at performing its best. Mm -hmm. And so um, you'll. my hope is that it, it's becoming more apparent to the public that we're encoding fewer emoji year after year, mm -hmm. less things that are theoretical uh, because the ones that were, there was like this phase in the subcommittee where they were like, yeah, sure, bring on a chair. Yeah, okay, how about a rope, um, a dumpling? You know, like there was like a really a mishmash. I think that was a really important experimental phase for, for Unicode and for the emoji subcommittee. But what we have found is those emoji generally are just not used at all. It's so infrequently that they're in your keyboard being scrolled past because, and, and it's, it's, it makes it feel more like a junk drawer than a keyboard. Yes. And so really figuring and, you know, and, and identifying concepts that have been used for not just the past couple decades, not even the past hundred years, but for thousands of years, like how we primarily express ourselves hmm. that hmm. It would benefit from ex existing in digital spaces. Hmm. And I think once I really appreciated how emoji are used to convey emotion and intent and body language, it really changed my perspective on what the subcommittee should prioritize. Hmm. Um, and I think the past couple of releases are 
you know, I'm so biased, but I think are some of the best emoji we've seen. We have a heart on fire. We have a head in clouds. We have melting fate. We have a number of new emoji that we've all seen before. Mm. We've all seen them before. Mm. And that to me is a, a marker that we're doing the right thing. We're not inventing it at all because we've all seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's sort of how I, I think about the subcommittee's responsibility and role and um, and what makes, you know, to some degree, what even makes a good emoji. Mm, that's great. You've been, is this true? You've been part of the subcommittee for about three years. Is that right, something? I think oh. about five years, late yeah. 2018. Ah. I think. Yeah. Controversial question. Are there some regretful emojis like that didn't need to exist? Oh, I, you know, I think anyone in the subcommittee would tell you that uh, I believe a lot of emojis should have never become emojis. Say more. <laughs> you know, I know, I, I think you can't have any regrets. No regrets, right? Okay. Gotta look forward. Gotta look forward. Uh, we've learned a lot from mistakes, mm-hmm. right? I can't, mm-hmm. you can't, I can't be too much of a curmudgeon. Um, I, I think that there's, I mean, I'm trying to think, I don't want, I'm wondering, I could either cite a specific one or talk about how it's impacted future decision-making. I mean, I, I felt like I really was a holdout for some of these more like random objects that can be emblematic of maybe your identity in some way, like a state flower, for example, or maybe a delicacy from your childhood. Right. But even when we look in non-communication spaces, you know, so like a text messaging, no one's using those emojis. But when you look in like bios, like Twitter bios, people are also not using those emoji where you would assume that, okay, these are being people put words or emoji that are important to them. And even there, they're not using them. And so we're like, okay, emoji really are popular because of how their function as an expressive tool. Mm. And what Unicode wants to not be in the business of, I think, is to not control that, right? What they want to do is create a experience where people can combine them and do that real pathetic face. Like we don't have to add this as a singular emoji now because you have the hands, you have the gesture and the face and you can combine them to me. So I actually use cowboy face like this now, which is not very popular, but I, you know, like I like to use, the, now that people understand that this kind of means something on, in, in a digital space, you can combine it with other emoji. And that is, that is, I mean, I mean, now I'm getting romantic, but that is, that is self-expression. Like that is true self-expression and it's infinite. And it doesn't require Unicode to encode every concept, every food, every ingredient in the world, because yeah. now people can combine existing ones to mean something completely new. Hmm. There's an illuminating list of pending emoji requests on the Unicode site. You've declined cannabis slash cannabis leaf six times, so don't even try it. <laughs> How are people saying marijuana? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Why do we not need a cannabis leaf, Jennifer? <laughs> you know, you'd be the in, like I said, the infinite creativity, just okay. human minds interacting with each other. They're, yes. like, they're like, they're, as soon as one becomes popular enough, you don't want to use it anymore because your parents now know about it, right? So, like, just using a leaf was popular, I think, about 10 years ago. Any leaf. Mm, the leaf mm. that was kind of falling that was kind of like twirling mm. um you can i mean like there's so much slang for drugs and sex and uh like you know that's the thing about younger generations is they're they, they're more playful than the previous one because they're more familiar with it they can take more risks because they're more confident using it mm. and so there's uh there's a lot of uh, are you asking for a friend no yes <laughs> Do you think use any of the facial expressions to mean it? You know, it depends on who you're talking to. Are you really texting someone about it? You know, like, um, so yeah, I think there's, there's a number of different emoji you can use. You no. don't need one. <laughs> no, there's plenty that exist. <laughs>